Hi guys, welcome to this video and we're going to be talking about Vue, Angular and React and what you should be looking at in 2021. The commonalities between them, the differences and when you choose them. Make sure you go ahead and stay tuned because I'll be revealing exactly the framework that I love and would choose over the others. My name's Lawrence, welcome to the Avalex channel. Hopefully if you're going to enjoy this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, give us a nice big thumbs up up and let's get on with the video. So first of all I want to start out with the commonalities of these frameworks because a lot of developers are getting strung up on which one should I learn rather than what do all of these frameworks achieve and what do they do. Once you understand this then you'll have a better idea of choosing the right framework. So the commonalities between them is basically just data binding. When we create very complex front-end applications and we have multiple options and we want to select things and things will change on the screen, traditionally we'd have to write watches and events and all kinds of things to update the page and keep it in sync. And we'd have to manage that process as developers. So what we want to do now is we want to use these frameworks so they do the heavy lifting. So first of all, with these frameworks, you would allow for data binding. They allow your application to be built in much smaller blocks rather than one giant monolithic page. We can break that down into much smaller pieces and have those pieces repeatable, making our code easily updatable and making the code more adaptable to the situation, more reactive. And also, it takes care of all the data binding. When the user changes an input, something will show or something will hide. And we don't have to write the events on that. The framework will do all of that heavy lifting. Likewise, if data comes from an e-commerce package or so forth, it can sit in the application state in all of these frameworks and update the application across multiple pages. There's another benefit and a commonality between all of these frameworks, which is SPA or single page application. They all are single page applications where basically you're not actually navigating away from the page. You are actually allowing the browser to re-render the page without completely reloading. So it's not like one click, complete reload, one click, pull everything down, reload. It's allowing reusable blocks and rendering, making SPA very quick and very, very efficient. So those are the commonalities between them. But what are the differences between them? Well, the reality is they're very similar in nature, but they all have their own syntactical sugar, meaning they have their own ways of going about things. So for example, Vue is actually one of the easiest ones to learn because its syntactical sugar is incredibly simple. And now with Vue 3, they've updated it with new features and you can tell that I have a great preference for Vue because it always manages to take very complex things and make it simple. That's why I call it the jQuery of frameworks. Now you also have React. Now React's main caveat and, and main difference is, okay, it's very, very functional. And that does help with the robustness of building applications but it can be a little bit more complex but overall it's pretty much the same thing you know all components have hooks and data and methods and so forth associated with them so react doesn't do as much lifting and give you as many of those nice features such as computed and so forth however react does give you a lot of easy to use features it's very well written, very well documented, and it won't let you get away with some things that Vue will. So React, you'll have to be very functional, very pragmatic, and you'll have to keep things broken down into smaller pieces. Now, Angular is a little bit of a dark horse of the family, as we would say, because it's not really something that people actually genuinely want to use most of the time, and most developers may say, oh, they don't want to learn that. Vue and React, you could pretty much take your knowledge and transfer over from one to the other. However, with Angular, uh, that is a bit more of an enterprise level framework. 
Now it does have some major pros there because number one, it's trying to put you into a workflow that will remove some of the complexities of working in a team. So when you're working with a team of people and you're building a very complex application and this framework lets you do pretty much whatever you want, like something like React or something, you can get very complicated. Now, when you're using Angular, Angular kind of puts you into a workflow. It puts you into a place where kind of those decisions are going to be made for you. And that's probably why some people don't like it. It's also very modular and it can be a little bit verbose. And they have fixed that in sort of the newish versions of Angular. They've kind of brought that syntax down and, and made it a little bit simpler. Now there's also another major difference between these and it's mainly between Vue and React and Angular. So with Vue, it has an application state. An application state stores all your information and it's mutatable. So what that means is you can change little parts of the application state that will affect overall the application. However, when it comes to React and Angular, they have a non-mutatable state. So whenever you want to make a change to that state, you have to completely copy that state, make your change, and then replace it. And one of the reasons why this is good is because it does kind of make things slightly more robust in a way because you'll get a timeline and in that timeline you'll see exactly the application state at that time. However, in production, they're all doing mutatable states and with Vue, it's using mutatable states right out of the box and it is faster, it is more efficient and it is easier to work with in that instance of not having a non-mutatable state, it's mutatable and therefore you can make changes to it a little bit easier. I promised at the start of this video, I would reveal my preferred framework. And my preferred framework would be Vue. Vue 2 was lagging behind a little bit and I saw its problems with its classical architecture. But now with Vue 3 and its modular broken down architecture that's very much kind of similar to React and their hooks, what really is great about that is it lets me break code down even further, organize my code even better. And I'll be creating videos on that as well well. So there's going to be so much fun with Vue 3 and that is definitely my choice for 2021 as the framework to learn for SPA technology. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Go ahead and click that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and there is some content up here that will explain a lot more in detail about how these SPAs work and what you need to know advancing your career. And the correct answer is there is not necessarily one framework only, but you should try to go for as many as you can and keep the commonalities between these frameworks so that you advance more in architecture rather than in framework and they will all fall into place and you'll be more valuable as a programmer.